Could, could be political, you know, anything. Uh, need not just be political. So anything that is controversial, I'm not saying it is always false, but there is a probability that it is false. And anything that fits into your biases, this is the biggest thing. So all of us believe in ideologies, we have grown up with some, there's nothing wrong or right with what you believe in. But anything that correctly fits into your ideology, you're okay, you know. Uh, this, this is, for example, today, uh, if somebody told you some other party is winning instead of the party that you like, you won't like it, right? You only like the party that you want to win. So always we tend to be happy when I receive a message which suits my ideology. So please be a devil's advocate. So if you get a message that perfectly suits your bias and you feel happy about it, there's something, I mean, that is to take note of. So any message you receive, look at these four things. See, is it too good to be true? Is it controversial? Can it create any controversy? Does it come with any known or unknown sources? Even known in the sense, uh, source is, there is a name to the source, but doesn't mean uh, the source is legitimate. And finally, does it fit into your process? We, uh, we tell you a very simple principle called PARI, very easy to remember, P-E-A-R-I. So what it means is, if you want to tackle the menace of fake news, the first step to do is pause. So whenever you receive anything, whenever you see anything on social media, if you want to stop the menace of fake news, pause. Don't, I know there is an urge to, and especially with journalism, uh, one other thing that I observed is, there is competition in your field, so you want to be the first one to share something. Right? So I know it's a very difficult thing to do, but that is how life is. So if you want to be seen as a very credible voice, the first thing to do is pause. The moment you see something, I mean, there's, there's, there's something wrong with the message, something wrong with the image, pause. The second is ask. What do you mean by ask? Ask could be, uh, because quite often we go to search engines, like Google, like others, we ask. I'll also tell you what to ask, how to ask. The third is read and review. I'm not asking you to believe what you see on Google. I'm asking you if you get a list of 10 sources, read those 10 sources, convince yourself if the sources have uh, you know links, etc. that you're convinced about. So once you read, review them, and finally, when you're convinced that, okay, you know, what I received is true or what I received is false, then make it a point to inform people who have shared it with you. So you must be part of a lot of groups where people keep sharing all kinds of issues. So when they keep sharing and you know something is wrong or right, always make it a habit to inform. So uh, I know, you know, there are family groups, there are friends groups. I'm sure they, it leads to a lot of uh, confrontation with friends when you, uh, see in most groups, 90% are silent. It is only the 10% who keep sharing, who keeps talking, right? Now, if you don't confront, and I'm saying confront, not in a, a negative sense, always in the groups, if you want to stop something, ask for sources. So the easiest way I do in my family group is any of my cousin, my uncle shares it, I just ask, can you share the source? 90% of the times they don't have the source, they'll stop sharing from the next time because I'm there in the group. I keep asking for the source. Now, I don't demean them, I don't say you are wrong or you're right, I only say, please share the source. When they share the source, if I still believe the source is wrong, not legitimate, then I make it a point to tell them. So the only way to stop this in the groups that you're part of is ask for the source. Right? Finally, like I said, PARI is a very simple principle. We'll look at you know, some of these things. Uh, yeah, the next important thing is get out of your bubble. Like I said, uh, if, you, if you have biases, ideologies, prejudices, get out of them. Especially if you're, it is like investigation. You know, the police, they know much better, they're, they're formally trained, uh, etc. But fact checking is also a sort of investigation where you will have to come out of your biases. Only when you come out of your biases, you will be able to do justice to what you're trying to capture. Uh, these are all types which I think uh, CPR has already covered. Uh, I'll share this PPT later with them. We'll look at a uh, couple of examples of what we can do. How many of you have come across this message, the first one? On the left side. Many, right? So a harmless message, you know, all of us identify with, let's say, alcohol as a, as a menace in society. So we believe, okay, such a great person who is known to be noble, is giving a message, so let's share it. Yes or no? So the easiest way, so let's start applying our principle here. So if I come across this message, anything too good to be true, why will a person like Ratan Data who never makes controversial statements talk about all concepts? Yes or no? I would think maybe if Anand Mahindra tweeted this, I will, okay, there's a possibility because he comments a lot on social issues. Not to, I mean, taken a different way, but he's very active on social media. But Ratan Data is not active. He never comments anything. So when I see this message, so it fits into my one of those four things. One, too good to be true, controversial, you know, 